What's up everyone, my name is Alpha and today we're back with another Pokemon challenge video. Today we're on Pokemon Omega Ruby. Ooh, I haven't played Oras in like uh, two weeks. And today's challenge will be, can I beat Pokemon Omega Ruby Hardcore Nuzlocke? No evolution at all. No shiny video this week, but we have a no evolution only challenge and it's a Hardcore Nuzlocke. I've done this normally in a normal challenge run, but we've never done it in a Hardcore Nuzlocke run. And I was actually pretty curious on how well I could do in this. Possibly one of my favorite videos to make ever, so you guys should stick around to the end and find out why. Not really a spoiler, but I would really recommend you guys trying out this challenge on your playthrough with a Hardcore Nuzlocke. It's really fun. But before we get into all that, I want to ask you guys if you guys could please support this video. Uh, leave a like. It will really help me out. And also subscribe to my channel because we're at like 34,000, something like that. We want to get to 50,000 by the end of the year. And I think you guys can help me out. And as well, you guys should follow my Twitter in the links in the description. Also, I open up a TikTok where I do like daily videos for fun. So you guys want to get into my personal life. I also post Pokemon stuff on there too. So you know what? There's more of me, more content out there. So I would recommend you guys check that out on in links in the description or the username on screen right now. But let's get into the challenge rules real quick. Firstly, the rule set of this is pretty simple. The Hardcore Nuzlocke rule. We're playing within a Nuzlocke. The first Pokemon in each route is the only Pokemon I can catch. In our situation, the first Pokemon that's not evolved, not in their evolved form, so the most basic form, or a Pokemon that doesn't evolve at all. It's the only Pokemon we're allowed to catch. So, say there's no evolutions at all, that's a legal Pokemon. If we get like a C Dot, uh, that is a legal Pokemon. However, if we get a Nuzleaf or a Shift Tree in the wild, we cannot catch any of those. So, we have to stick with the single basic evolution of the line. So, hope that makes sense. You guys will understand as it goes on. As well, fainting equals death, and we have to implement the hardcore Nuzlocke rules into it, which includes playing on set mode, which is very difficult, meaning you cannot switch out Pokemon after you defeat the opponent's Pokemon. As well, you can't use items inside a battle. You can use hell items, but you can't use just bag items, essentially. And there is a level cap, so when you enter a gym fight, your Pokemon cannot be over the level cap. If it gains level over the level cap while you're in the battle with the gym leader, it sh it's fine. I mean, you just gain XP. It's part of the game. But you cannot be over it when you enter the battle. And finally, and the last rule of the challenge, each of my Pokemon will be nicknamed after you guys. And there are a lot of nicknames. And that's a little spoiler on how, how crazy this challenge gets. But there are 20 nicknames that I use. Actually, 21 in this hardcore Nuzlocke that I use. So here are all 20 nicknames. If you guys want to be nicknamed after my Pokemon in my future challenge videos, just drop in the comments and hopefully I'll pick yours. And again, while you're down there, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Let's get into the challenge video itself. So to be an off, we're going to pick a suitable starter Pokemon. We're going to pick up Mudkip. Mudkip is arguably the best starter Pokemon in my opinion to have. Kind of has some ground moves that will be useful for later on. And we're going to start off with Mudkip. Unfortunately, we can't evolve it. So it's a pure water type, which I was very confused about. I thought it was like Bulbasaur where it came out with a dual typing just to start off with. But no, it evolves into a ground and water type. I can't even utilize the ground feature of him. But that's fine. As we head into the first route of the game, in Route 101, we're able to find ourselves a Poochiana as our first ever encounter. And obviously, we're going to put that on our team. Heading up north into Route 104, we're able to catch ourselves a Wingo, which... Surprisingly, I thought I was going to get something garbage like a Zigzagoon or a Wormpole, but completely avoid that. And then we head into Route 103, which where we found a Zigzagoon. But that's three Pokemon to start off the game with. And then heading to this route, this is the most important count to start off the game. We do get a Taillow, and I was very hoping for a Taillow. And we get that on our team. And heading into Petalbrick Forest, we're able to find our first encounter in the woods. A Shroomish, which I assume was going to be a Wormpole. But you know what? Take the Shroomish. Next up, we're going to head outside of Rustboro City to collect the berries. Always remember to collect the berries. Very important rule of every single Nuzlocke you do. Just get the berries. It'll help you out. <laughs> Next up, we're going to head into the first gym fight in the game. We're going to face off against Roxanne. Roxanne is going to be the rock type gym leader of the game. And we're going to start with the battle against her using our Mudkip. Mudkip, two Pokemon against this Mudkip. It should be fine. We're going to water gun down the Geodude and just end it. Uh, we're going to mud step into the nose pass to lower its accuracy and just water gun it down. Avoid a tackle and then survive two rock tombs and we should be good as we beat down Roxanne. Get the first gym badge. This went pretty easily. We didn't even lose a single Pokemon so far. And now we head into Duford Island where we're going to train up our Taylor. This fight got a little bit messy, got very close to the end. Luckily, luckily, our Taylor is very strong and actually finished off the mud chop. 
as we face off against Brawly next. Brawly is going to be the second gym leader in the game. And we're going to start out the battle against him using our Taylor, which is going to two-shot him to knock out his Machop that didn't attack me. That random Machop trainer did more damage to him. And then he switches out into his Makuhita, which he decided to not use any moves at all. I went through Brawly and defeated him without taking a point of damage at all, so that was fun. Next up, we're going to head into Duford Cave, where it's actually going to be the most important encounter in the game. Our first encounter in this game, I was looking for a Makuhita. But we end up getting a Zubat, which, I mean, I wasn't too happy about getting it, but it actually come into a great deal of help later on in the game, and you'll see why. Next up, we're going to head into this Rival Battle fight against Mei, and unfortunately, this is where it gets difficult. This is going to be our first death of the game. Now, I was kind of hoping I'd keep this Pokemon. Uh, I knocked out the Slugma using my Wingo, and then I switched out into my Shroomish against the Whelmer use rollout and at this point it got too deep in where i can't switch out into anyone hindsight telling me i should have switched out into my puchiana or my zigzagoon one of these could have been a great alternative to losing my shroomish but he just built up so much power in his rollout that it would just it ended up knocking me out and unfortunately that's the first death of the game i wish i could go back and then just I don't know, sacrifice my puchiana or someone it would have been more useful because shroomish had a lot of good moves on his arsenal like Leech Seed and Stun Spore that could have been really good, and now I just lost it. But we're going to move on. In this grass, in the same patch that we lost Shroomish, our first encounter here will be an Electrite, which is very cool. And also we got one with an ability Lightning Rod, which is going to be very helpful when we go into the next gym, the Electric Gym of the game. Uh, before we do though, we're going to head into Marvel City and then get some TMs, Charge Beam, and Bodos. Uh, Bodos, we're not going to use Charge Beam, we will use <laughs> Next up, we're going to face off against the third gym leader in the game. We're going to face off against Watson. Watson's going to be an electric type gym leader of the game. And like I said, Electrite's going to be pretty useful. It does have Lightning Rod, so I could take any attacking move. As I try to beat down the Magnemite with Charge Beam myself, I get a lot of special attack boost, which is pretty nice. And I'm able to knock out the Magnemite and also the Voltar very easily. So that's, you know, does for me. Does for me. Uh, next up, he can switch out into his Magneton. Now, unfortunately, I've also ran out of Charge Beam PP, so I have to switch out my poor Electrite into my Zigzagoon. Now, this is the only time you ever use Mud Sport be useful, which is kind of funny. Now, we're going to switch out into our Mud Kip, and hopefully Mud Slap will do a lot of damage to it. I survive a Magnum Bomb, and then hit it with a Mud Slap. Unfortunately, it hits me with a Volt Switch, which will kill me because the Mud Sport evaporated or something, and... We lose Mudkip, but we're able to knock out the Magneton using our Puchiana, which I guess it's a fair trade. I don't know. I kind of want my Mudkip still because Mudkip is a really good water type Pokemon. That is a shame. We lost our starter Pokemon, but we have to move on. We're going to move on to this patch of grass in Route 114. Catch ourselves a Volbeat, which is going to be nice. In the head out, we also catch a Numo in Fiery Path. I didn't show that. Sorry. Uh, we also found ourselves a Spinda here. We were looking for a Skarmory. Obviously, Skarmory is a rare encounter, so we found a Spinda. It's all good. And then we head into Meteor Falls where we encounter a Soul Rock. Now, this is kind of what we wanted in Meteor Falls, obviously. Unfortunately, it gets us into a Fire Spin. It does a lot of damage with Sai Wei. So, unfortunately, we have to knock it out because I was not going to risk throwing a ball and risking my Wingo's death just for a Soul Rock right now. So... Unfortunately, we lose an encounter at Meteor Falls, which is kind of annoying. Things get worse for me as we head into Mount Chimney, and we get poisoned by the coughing, and my electric goes down, and I'm just, I'm just shaking my head how unlucky this run is getting. But you know what? I deserve it. I got very lucky with my previous run on Pokemon Moon, where we toxic everything and got very lucky with it. But I mean, it's not even the end as we face off against Maxi here. Uh, we're able to do a lot of damage. We clear through Maxi's first Pokemon. Unfortunately, his second Pokemon will be a camera. Bad assumption by me. I try to sand attack it and then it decides to knock out my Poochian in one shot. I forget that these basic Pokemon have very, very fragile defenses and they end up destroying my Pokemon. So unfortunately, we put two deaths on a death counter real quick. So ugh, it's kind of annoying. So next up, we're going to head into Laverage Town. We're going to face off against the gym leader of the game. We're going to face off against Flannery. Now, Flannery is going to be the fire type gym leader, and we're going to start the battle against her using my Wingo. Now, Wingo is going to have a sea incense attached to him, 
so it's going to do more damage where water moves it's going to water post and knock out the slugma two shot into the torkoal luckily it got confused so it couldn't do anything like body slam me so i'm able to two shot it knock him out very easily and then her final pokemon will be a pneumo which is four times weak to water so it's gonna go down so we beat flannery and now we can move on into the desert now the desert now thinking back to it i could have got a leap i completely forgot about the fossils in here i ran into a cacnea and i was like this is boring I didn't want to catch i don't want a cacnea on my team anyway so i just left so this <laughs> left cacnea and then completely forgot about the fossils that's on me but anyways now we get to face off against norman norman's gonna be the fifth gym leader in the game and we're starting the battle against him using our volbeat now volbeat actually has protect it learned it naturally so that's actually pretty nice i messed up here I remember one of my bug runs early on in the month that I used uh, Tail Glow and then Bug Buzz or something to knock out the slacking one shot. I confused it up and used Charge Beam and Tail Glow in the same move pool. Why would I have Charge Beam and Tail Glow? Just doesn't make any sense at all. So I am going to two shot down the slacking. Uh, figure out is going to survive a hit from me and Encore me because I should have used Struggle Bug as my move. And that causes me to be in a bad situation against the final slacking, which I'm forced to use charge beam against him. And he's going to swagger me. Luckily, the only time that I hit myself is the time that it decides to heal itself. So no punishment over there. And I snap out of confusion. And I'm able to protect myself against the slacking and charge beam it down very easily. So I, I'll play it with protect from now on. But that could have went really, really badly if obviously i hit myself at any point against the slacking but we got through it and luckily we get past norman next up we have access to surf and we can cross the body of water go into this patch of grass and we're able to catch ourselves a kecleon here in this case kecleon actually has a pretty good move pool so i'm i'm down for that then next up we're gonna move ahead unfortunately we lose our wingle at this fight against this vigoroth for no reason so that's me absolutely throwing my pokemon for no reason so Put down our Wingo into the box, unfortunately. But luckily, when we head into the Weather Fortress, we're able to get ourselves a cast form. So that's a new Pokemon. Nice to replace Wingo in. Wingo is dead. I just forgot to, to update the layout. That's my bad. But it'll, it'll be updated by the next gym. And our first encounter outside of Fortress City in this route will be a Tropius. Now, Tropius, I'll be more happy with this Tropius encounter if this didn't happen. So it completely baited me in. So I was trying to catch it. I was like, ooh, I did enough damage. I should be able to catch it. Bait me in using Leaf Tornado over and over again. I was like, okay, it can't do too much damage. Then it whipped out a stomp and it stomped my tail and crit it and then knocked them out. I was like, okay, okay, buddy, you got to calm down. So luckily, I forced myself to catch the Tropius at this point because I lost my Flying type Pokemon, both my Flying type Pokemon in Wingo and Taylo. So we had to replace it with a Tropius. So luckily, we did that and we could face off against the sixth gym leader in the game in Winona. We're known as giving me the flying type gym leader, and we're gonna start the battle against her using our bow beat. We take one air lace, and in my head, I was like, when I did the bug challenge, it was so much easier. Then I realized, oh wait, because I intimidate down the swallow, that's why it was so much easier. So, luckily enough, I am able to hit the charge beam through double teams, and he doesn't hit me ever again. I'm able to get a charge beam off against the Pelipper, which I really should have just roosted off against, or moonlight off against. It would have been easier because I moonlight off against the Skarmory. It does a lot of damage, so I gotta put it down. Luckily, I don't miss the charge beam. I knock him out very easily. And then I know for sure from previous experience that Volpe and Altario has a weird matchup where it doesn't want to hit me for some reason. It decides to Dragon Breath me, so I'm able to get a bunch of Moonlights off against it, charge beam it down. Eventually, eventually I am able to knock it out. And I don't lose a single Pokemon in this gym fight. I Do I even lose any Pokemon in my gym fights? I think I lost one. And that's in the third gym against Watson. But everything else was just random battles. So, I mean, kind of dumb. But anyways, we're going to move on into the Safari Zone. Where we find ourselves a Doduo. Doduo? Do how do you say that? It's been like 20 years. I don't know how to say Doduo. Is it Doduo? I think it's Doduo. And I'm not going to catch a Doduo. From there, we're going to go into the water of Lilico City. And then get ourselves a Tentacle. Because... I mean, I forgot there's water encounters. <laughs> there's so much water. I mean, there's only so many water type Pokemon in the water. It's just a lot of water. It's just not a lot of counters. But we catch ourselves a tentacle. And then we face up against Courtney in the Team Magma hideout. Unfortunately for us, our Numo goes down against the camera up as I was trying to magnitude it. It was a bad idea. Luckily, Spindle will clean up the fight against him. But I was kind of hoping for the Team Numo because Numo could have been useful later on in the game. Uh, but we put another death in the death counter, which is nice. 
Uh, from there, we can go into Shoal Cave and catch ourselves a Sphiel. Because, I mean, that's the only thing that we can catch at this point. We're running out of encounters. We're running out of Pokemon that we could even find in the wild that are basic Pokemon. That just don't evolve or are the first stage. So, we catch ourselves a Sphiel and then go into the water. Catch ourselves a Whalmer. So that's pretty nice. These two Pokemon will be very helpful as we face off against the seven gym leaders in the game. We're going to face off against Tate and Liza in this double battle fight. They're going to be Rock and Psychic users, so it should be pretty fine as we face off against Tate and Liza using our Whalmer and our Sphiel. I thought this was going to be a little bit easier since we're water types. Uh, I start off the battle using my Whalmer water spouting into the Soul Rock. And then it's going to Rock Side knock out my Sphiel first turn. Oh my god. And then I'm like... Wow, what a waste of time, wasn't it? So I sent out my Kecleon next. Unfortunately, my Kecleon is so slow that it doesn't even knock out the Sword Rock yet. As my Wormer outspeeds it and then dies to a Psychic from the Lunatone. And then knocks out the Sword Rock. And I'm like, okay, so both Pokemon I just caught are dead. So they're just dead. So that's great. That's always fun to have. Luckily, in the following turn, my Volby and my Kecleon knocks out the Lunatone. And we could progress from there. Uh, we face off against Maxi here. We don't lose anything to Maxi. Luckily, luckily Volpi can sweep. And then now we get to face off against Primal Groudon. Primal Groudon, there's a lot of preparations for me to do. I got the Eviolite, Light so I could have, I don't know, none of my Pokemon evolve anyway, so I can't even use Eviolite Light correctly. I also went back and got the TM for Toxic. And I taught that to my Zubat that I had earlier on in my adventures on Duford Cave. Now I put Zubat on my team, it's level 19, I think, or 17, something like that. The reason I'm using this is that Groudon has Precipice Blades, Earthquake, Rest, and Lava Plume. It's a 1 in 4 chance of hi actually hitting my Zubat, so I decided to just go out, sack my Zubat. If it dies, it dies, but I'm able to get a Toxic off on it and Confuse Ray it, and then it ends up knocking itself out. So my Zubat actually ends up owning the Gr Primal Groudon, and I'm like... That's not supposed to happen, but it happens. So we don't lose a single Pokemon to Primal Ground. I was dreading this fight because I was like, it's just getting destroyed my entire team. But ends up pretty fine for us. So now we can move on and face off against Wallace. Wallace is going to be the eighth gym leader in the game, and he's very simple. I mean, I started the battle against him using my Volby. I'm going to Tail Glow up, and then Thunderbolt would knock out his Love Disc. Now, I assume Thunderbolt plus 6 from a Volpe would knock out the Maltic, and I was wrong. But luckily, it gets paralyzed and misses his Hydro Pump, so I was very confused on that. I was I was wondering why it wouldn't knock him out, but okay. So I'm with Thunderbolt again. I know I could live with Hydro Pump, so I just Moonlight up, and then Thunderbolt would knock him out, and the rest of his team will go down very easily. His Celio will go down to another Thunderbolt, his Wish Cash goes down to a Bug Buzz. And his final Pokemon will be a Sea King that goes down to Thunderbolt. And we end up beating the 8th Gym Leader in the game. We gotta press B to cancel all the evolution. And now we can move on and get our final Pokemon. Now we deep sea dive into these grass. We're able to find ourselves a Clampro. And that will be our final Pokemon. Because it has a pretty good special attack. I don't know. So it learns Shell Smash. So I wanted to utilize that later on. And it's gonna come in handy. So from there we're gonna move on into Victory Road. Where we face up against Wally and... I was actually scared for this fight, but luckily Volby is a monster and could carry us through this entire fight very easily. And, you know, super simple. Bug Buzz is a sick move, just destroys everyone, as you can see. And now we can move on into the Elite Four, where we start off our Elite Four challenge against Sydney. Sydney is going to be the Dark Type Elite Four member, and I started the battle against him using my Volby. I assume he was going to be strong enough to use Bug Buzz and just destroy everyone. Unfortunately, it was not. Mighty Anna survives one and then swaggers me, so I gotta switch out into my Spinda. Now, Spinda is going to put it to sleep, so it allows me into my Volbeat once again. Volbeat's able to tail glow up finally and then get the kill on it. So, we just had to set up one time and then knock out the entire team. The Absol will go down in one shot. His Ship Tree will go down in one shot. It doesn't even need to be boosted. I know it will go down in one shot. The Sharpedo has no defense, it will go down, and then his final Pokemon will be a Cacturn. It also goes down, and we end up beating Sydney very easily. Now next up, we're going to teach our Pokemon Shadow Ball, well, all the Pokemon that we can, Shadow Ball, and now we can face off against Phoebe. Phoebe is going to be the Ghost-type Elite Four member of the game. We're going to start the battle against her using our Volbeat. We're going to set up right in front of the Dusclops as it curses me, which is not very nice. I'm going to Shadow Ball it, oh, knock him out. And then she can switch out into her Sableye, which 
I thought I could knock it out and then switch out later. It's going to fake out me, unfortunately. So if I want to take out the Sea Blight with my Volt Beat, yeah, my Volt Beat will go down. So I decided to switch out into uh, to my Spinda. Spinda cannot take another foul play. I switch out into my Clan Pro. Clan Pro, unfortunately, does not get the burn on the Sea Blight. So I got to switch out back into my Tropius. Luckily, Tropius can do something and knock out the Sea Blight for us. Her next Pokemon will be her Ace in Dusnor, and I'm like, oh, gotta do something about this. I switched out into my Cast Form, and then I'm able to Rain Dance up in front of him, change into my Water Form, and then take a Thunder Punch, which is unfortunate. I'm able to survive another one, though, as I Hydro Pump it, take another Thunder Punch, luckily it doesn't crit, and then I'm able to Shadow Ball and knock out the Dusnor. Ooh, that's a good clutch, you know? Next Pokemon will be a Bayonet, and her last two Pokemon are pretty dangerous. I switched out into my Kecleon. Because I assume Kecleon could do something. It's going to unfortunately Toxic me as the Shadow Claw would knock him out. And then her next Pokemon will be the same Bayonet. But this time it does. It survives a Shadow Claw. Which I'm kind of annoyed by. So it's going to actually weaken me down and then full restore. So this Toxic damage is racking up. So I switch out to my Tropius. I'm going to do some chip damage against her using Air Slash. I do two Air Slashes. My special defense goes down. But I know it's going to go into another Shadow Ball. So I switched out into my Spinda to Sucker Punch into the Bayonet and knock it out eventually so we end up beating phoebe with my entire team getting beat down pretty bad but no one dies so that's actually pretty nice as we face off against the next elite four member we're gonna face off against glacia glacia is giving me the ice step elite four member and we're starting the battle against her using our volby volby is going to tail glow up twice get a plus six easily as she sets up a light screen which is gonna be annoying so i decided to wait it out i know i can survive any hits with roost now of my choice of recovery move so I can just roost off all the damage very easily and then knock out the Glalie once the light screen goes down. And then Shadow Ball into the Frost Lass. How am I faster than a Frost Lass? Okay, I outspeed it. Shadow Ball will knock out two Frost Lass. Frost Lasses? Frost Lassies? Yeah, Frost Lasses. Uh, Bug Buzz will knock out the Wall Ring and the final Pokemon will be a Glalie. Uh, I'm able to Shadow Ball it. Two Shadow will knock him out and we end up beating Glacia very easily. Another sweep by Volbeat. Volbeat is heavily carrying me through the entire game right now, which is nice. And we're going to face off against the next Elite Four member. We're going to face off against Drake. Drake's going to be the Dragon type Elite Four member. And we're going to start the battle against him using our Cast Form. Our Cast Form? Our Cast Form. <laughs> our Cast Form actually has Ice Beam. I don't need to switch stances. I don't know if it changed my stats or not, but I'm able to Ice Beam, knock out the Altario. He's going to switch into his Flygon, uh, take a Boom Burst easily. Ice Beam would knock him out. And then he switches out into his another Flygon, which I'm like, okay, Ice Beam will knock him out. And then he switches out into his Ace Pokemon, which is going to be a Salamence. I'm going to Ice Beam to stay in. I avoided a Dragon Rush, and I'm able to Ice Beam, knock him out. And then his final Pokemon will be a Kingdra. I'm like, Hurricane, get a Confusion on the two. I don't take the Surf too well. So I decided to back out, go into my Clan Pro against the Kingdra. I'm going to Shell Smash up. This is the first time you see it. And now at this point, I know an Ice Beam will knock him out. So Ice Beam will outspeed and knock out the Kingdra. And we end up beating all four members of the Elite Four without losing a single Pokemon. Now we head into the real challenge. We face off against the champion in the game. We face off against Steven Stone. Now Steven Stone uh, is a mineral guy. He likes rock types. He loves steel types. All that type of stuff. So we start the battle against him using our Cast Worm. We're going to Scald into his Skarmory to get a burn on it. And then I should have Hydro Pump here because this is a kind of a throw because he i know he's getting toxic me so i should have just hydro pump or scald i should have just scald again something like that it would have worked nicely but i just wanted the you know i wanted the form change so badly and luckily it doesn't use giga drain against my cast from this turn so i can switch out into uh, my tropius on this turn now uh, i taught tropius toxic so i'm able to toxic stall down the cradley as it poisoned me ironically so i'm able to roost off the damage i for sure it confused me but i want to for sure hit it do some damage to it so it'll go down with the toxic so i don't have to worry about it anymore clearly goes down and then his next pokemon will be an aggron i made it to earthquake it that's what my plan was and then it stone edged me so my tropius got outspeed by a hunk of metal i don't even know how that makes sense now i know aggron has sturdy i need to break sturdy so unfortunately i had to switch out into my volby to break it sturdy for sure so Volby has to go down. I mean, it gets paralyzed. I was hoping maybe it gets stuck in paralysis. It doesn't. So I swapped out into my cast form to scald it now to knock him out. Mystic Water on this cast form is actually very useful. If I landed this Hydro Pump, oh my god, if I landed this Hydro Pump, I could have knocked it out in one shot or could have done something crazy. 
Uh, unfortunately, I lit a hydro pump uh, because I missed one of them and has light screen up. So I'm going to put it to sleep and then call mine up. I don't know what I'm doing at this point. And I'm able to knock him out using Shadow Ball. His next Pokemon was going to be in a model. It's going to knock me out with an Exorcer. So I went into my Clan Pro. I'm like, okay, this might be the play. Shell Smash is going to make me faster than a model. And I'm able to scald it down. I'm praying. I'm hoping. I'm hoping I'm faster than his Ace Pokemon, the Mega Metagross. I am faster than it, but I don't knock him out. I scald him. I burned him, though. That is a great line. And he Giga impacts me. So that means... All I gotta do is do enough damage here. So I decided to Shadow Claw into the Mega Metagross. And the burn takes care of the rest. I knock out Metagross with the burn. And we survive. We beat the challenge. Oh my god. We end up beating the challenge. And we beat the game with just Kecleon at the end. We got 14 deaths. Maybe a little excessive. Uh, <laughs> we went into double digits. We got very close to 20 deaths. Which, oh my god. This is one of the most fun runs I've done in a little bit because there's no shiny Pokemon involved. So there's no back and forth repetitiveness. This is just straight up trying to beat the game using what I have. And it was quite fun. And I want to say thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. It means a lot to me. If you guys can, please don't forget to leave a like. Comment down below some challenge ideas and some nicknames down below. And subscribe if you guys are not already. It will greatly help my channel. Yeah, and my name is Ben Alpha. Hope you guys all had a great day. Peace out.